PS4 for the players. ここ。うん。俺たちちっちゃくなってる。それにこの格好。あっちは驚いてもいいのかな。早く出せ。あいつら誰だ。君たち新しいおもちゃなのかおもちゃさっきのモヤモヤのことを知っているのか俺はハートレスだよハートレスは前からここにいたのかいや最近になって現れたんだそういえばそのハートレスが現れたのとみんながいなくなった時期は一致する
き者と抜け殻が合わさり新たな命を得たかハートレスとノーバディの関係を見るようだなお前ら何がしたいんだよ我らも欠落した闇を手に入れなければならないそれにはこの世界の心のつながりが手がかりになる Hi, I'm Jari Hakkanen. I'm senior level designer at Housemark, and today we are going to play Motherfall, new twin stick action arcade game from Housemark. Let's have an awesome playthrough here at E3. On Motherfall, you play as Avalon Darrow, a hired mercenary who's been hired to take down a red matter enemies from the Fortuna city. And now we are at the hydroponics level. Uh, this is the like lots of like foliage. Uh, atmospheric effects and like plants. This is the place where the oxygen is produced to the city. Basically what you control with this game, it's a, in its core it's a twin stick shooter. You move with the left, shoot with the right. Here we are using a, utilizing our dash move. You can actually dash uh, through to enemies and stun them and then you can easily kill them. So when enemies turn blue they are stunned and they are easier to take down. Yeah, here's the big spider. Uh, it's a bigger enemy, but uh, easy to get down if you know what you're doing. There's a grenade that the character can shoot by pressing R2. It's an augmentation that you can get from the civilians when you save them from the levels. You can get different types of augmentations. Uh, there are a grenade, a seeker with a homing bullet, power shot with the piercing bullets, uh, and a shotgun with the short, short range but a powerful blast. Here you can see those arcade enemies. They are dropping these blue orbs that if player collects those and can then activate uh, overcharge mode. When the time slows down, player is invulnerable and has an extra firepower so enemies are super easy to take down. You get the highest score by doing that. And here we can see the blue, blue platforms that player can create with his matter set gun. This is a really a score-centric game. Each level has a high score list that you can compete with other players. Uh, and you can get a score by killing enemies, killing enemies fast, and killing lots of enemies at the same time. So, and also you can get the score by speed running the level. So it's, it's planned for both, so you can really choose your, choose your way how you want to approach the levels. So be fast, but be efficient and kill everything. Doing that, you get the highest score. When rescuing the civilians, you get score, but you also also ha get augmentation. So to basically, those civilians that you rescue give you weapons, uh, secondary fires, and uh, uh, passive augmentations that will modify your gameplay style. Seeker. Now we actually see here uh, a homing weapon, or the seeker, that uh, has an awesome uh, purple uh, projectiles that are flying to the enemies. So basically this is a weapon that you can fire and forget and the bullets do their job. And here you can see uh, our intense moments. You, there's lots of action, enemies coming all around, but you can clear them easily if you know what you're doing. Grenade. Multiplier down. Seeker. Multiplier down. Power shot. We utilize lots of like particles on our explosions, so the important thing for us is also get the clarity right. We have lots of colors, lots of explosions, lots of stuff flying around, and uh, we used lots of time to get the, like, the colors right, the feel right, so it's, it's a clear for player what's happening on the screen. Overcharge. We have multiple enemy types. What we see here are called arcade enemies. They spawn and try to attack the player. There is a hovering mine and missiles that player needs to dodge or shoot. Then we have lots of persistent enemies. Like here we can actually see the spider, jumping spider, turret, uh, and a, a bigger sealed guy that you really need to utilize your strategy to take him down. 
seeker. Power shot. Grenade layer down. We have this hydroponics, and then we have city, this clean, uh, uh, like really clean sci-fi looking city. And then we have matter mines, this is dar dark and ominous compared to these other ones. We took lots of aesthetics from clean sci-fi movies. With the matter beam, you can actually create those blue platforms. You can activate elevators and take down score containers. Yeah, this is the zero G section, like basically you are flying around 360, you can use all your moves that you use normally, like dashing uh, and shooting, and now it's like 360 and floating. So basically, uh, you need to be really sure what you're doing now. Shot. You don't need to learn to all the levels and the bullet patterns. Uh, they are easy to approach and they are easy to read what's happening on the, on, on the screen. So basically, and you also have your, your moveset to help you to get through them. So basically there's nothing cheap with our bullet patterns. Now the level is ending, but I, I think we should play the boss also, because the boss is awesome. This is uh, called Autonomous Hunter Killer, so inspired by these Japanese arcade games with bosses with crazy names. So we have one here, it's a, this wasp-like red matter uh, mechanical monster that you need to take down. It, it, it uses bullet barrages and uh, red matter attacks and it, it's going to spawn different kind of enemies. So this, this boss really utilizes your moveset and you really need to be uh, aware about your surroundings because it's going to spawn enemies behind you. Power shot. Bosses has, has their own score, uh, so basically uh, try to kill the boss fast as possible so you get the highest score and without taking damage so you can keep your multiplier off. In the game we have three different bosses, uh, each day unique uh, for the teams. So this is the first boss for the Fortuna City. We have basically easy, medium and hard. And then when you finish the game with any difficulty, we unlock this insane mode where you have only one health bar uh, and the enemies are shooting revenge bullets, so it's going to be extra hard. The feedback from fans has been excellent. They are loving the game. It's, uh, we, have, we have been heard comments like it's super addictive, it looks awesome and it's fun to play. Power shot. Now let's just kill that sucker and now we actually can see awesome explosion their boss is dying this is the house mark style of explosion <laughs> yeah that was waterfall i hope you enjoyed what you see thanks for watching playstation I've always been a fan of the dark side. The idea of the Imperial perspective is you never really understand who they are as people, right? Or how the organization works. How can we distill that and how can we make a story around that? The story of Battlefront 2 is absolutely an essential story. What happened after Return of the Jedi? What happened to the galaxy? What happened to the Empire without an Emperor? What it might feel like to be in this galaxy as it starts to break apart. What's really exciting about this story is that we're going to see it from the point of view of a character like Aiden. So we're going to see it from this Imperial point of view. Inferno Squad is a black ops team that most people don't even know exist. We weren't expecting special forces. We happen to be on Endor when the second Death Star explodes. 
Aiden is presented with an extreme challenge, the destruction of the Death Star 2 and the death of the Emperor. What sort of choices would somebody in that situation have to make about who they are and what the galaxy was going to become? And it's interesting, does that mean, now that the Empire's fallen, that they're the underdogs? Aiden is a tried and true and through and through Imperial. She's somebody who grew up on a planet called Vardos. She was very quickly put into a military camp for children. She has spent her whole life building up to this moment to be commander of Inferno Squad. I'm afraid this informed the Admiral that Operation Cinder could proceed as planned. Hask is the most zealous of them all, I would say. He's the most interested and invested in how far the Empire is willing to go. He was an orphan, so he needed something to latch onto. Empire is peace and justice and order. Even when people are faltering around him, he pushes forward and says, no, the Empire is the way. I'm picking up distress calls, too many to count. Dell has seen more of the galaxy than most people in the Empire. He actually grew up on Coruscant during the time of the Jedi. He brings a lot of humor. Him and Aiden have a bit of a banter, have a bit of a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Family is a really important element in Star Wars, and one of the things that we wanted to make sure we captured is the dynamic between Garrick Versio and his daughter Aiden Versio. This is the catalyst for Aiden, where she learns the future of the Empire and she's elevated to a point by her father. Your next assignments, they are unusual. She's my daughter. She's all I have. I do need for her to understand why I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Everything in Star Wars is connected, and part of our job is to make sure that the games we're making do connect back into that larger universe. But we're now able to use this game in Battlefront 2 as a resource to take this information into future development projects. Hope cannot save them! I think all those gamers out there are gonna just love it. This is the culmination of all of the things that are good in the world. <laughs> Video games, Star Wars, and a team of people that are willing to take the time to do the work. We have to take risks, we have to be bold, we have to push everyone's boundaries and leave a good footprint behind. Station.